in the Keweenaw, all the river deltas are on inland lakes. There are none in Lake Superior. Not a single one. And this is one of the big lessons that happens. Okay, a stamp sand is, for all intents and purposes, a man-made delta. That's all it is. It, 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 the, the main differences between a stamp sand and a delta is that stamp sands happen quickly and they're not random. And deltas happen much more slowly and they're pretty much random. Okay. So I want you to take this kind of away. So if you have a geologic background, especially in sedimentology, you know already know a lot about stamp sand <coughs> sorts of processes. And you know, you know that the river comes out and drops material and then it develops things called distributaries. Okay. Those are just like the channels that man made the sluice ways that people made when they made the stamp sand hill. Okay, so let's go back now to talk about a mining system. Because all of these things relate to the mining system. You can see the relationship here. George Lake can come in closer if you want. So everyone can see, but there's Torch Lake here. And, and, and these peninsulas sticking out into Torch Lake from the northwest side here, those are the stamp sand bodies sticking out into the, the water. Here's the Sturgeon River Delta. Here, here's the Pilgrim River Delta. Located here with the stamp sand right next to it. Okay, so just to show you these sorts of features. There's also something right here which is called the Trap Rock Delta. The Trap Rock Delta is basically obscured completely by this stamp sand that comes out where the Lake Linden Park is. So, so it's sort of in limbo, but it's a very nice little delta. And, um, you know, so the road that goes around goes right, right past that delta. So we have deltas on the inland lakes, but no deltas, even though they are prominent stamp sand locations at Gay and at Frida, there's no, nothing like a delta present there. There was something like a delta at Gay for a while, but it's pretty much gone and we'll see the details it's very of that. Fascinating. So while we're, I, I, no, I, I want it was, it's a historical breakthrough. I think it was because it's that when we did the Kites project, we found the rocks were uh, angular, meaning it was probably uh, so a very everyone short to, event, uh, catastrophic sort of event. I want everyone to know who Charlie Kerfoot is and uh, Steve Trinowski. Uh, these are two of the expert helpers that we have with us today. And another is Carol. I'm here. McLennan. Yeah. There. <laughs> and uh, and, and uh, we have Scott Say, and we have a lot of people from the Park uh, Service. We have Erica and Carrie who are helping me, and later on uh, you'll meet the captain, and you also meet Mark Clowiter. And all these people are kind of here to help, and may come in and talk at various times, and 